Hello, hope everybody's having a great day today. Sorry I couldn't make it. We're still going to have a good time though and talk about consumer electronic security systems and how insecure they really are. We were able to test this and compromise it with, a, with very little equipment that you can buy at Amazon or just about anywhere else. So let's go on and get into the presentation. I do want to introduce a few of the people that I work with in the lab. Uh, the first is Mr. Rhodes. As you can see, he's prior service. He has a lot of experience. And he is a fantastic researcher. Next, I'd like to introduce you to Ryan Smith. He's also a member of the lab. Very creative. He also does exceptional work. And that leaves me. Uh, let's see, I managed the lab that uh, did part of the testing. And I have a few advanced degrees, certificates, and lately I've been researching how to leverage AI to help the industry. My latest research projects have been uh, with autonomous vehicles using AI to improve the security of those. So when they become greater on the autonomous scale, that they're more of a useful asset versus a liability or risk. And also identifying base bias in AI data derived from the vehicles. This is a slide I like to put into all of the presentations. And you know, I focus in on the last sentence, and this is from Jason Street. He's a exceptional pen tester. But what did you do today to make things better? When you're working, when you're interacting, what did you do to make the industry better? I mean, that's why I'm doing all the presentations. That's why I have all the publications. That's why I mentor to make things better. And remember, it's not how many exploits that you can do. It's not checking the box. It's working together to make things better for everyone. The lab chose IoT devices since they are literally all around us. They're in our homes, they're at work. You know, at home you can have your Nest thermostat, you can have your smart light bulbs, smart toaster, smart refrigerator, everything. It's all around us. So it offered plenty of opportunity to test different types of products. And it was very fruitful from the various ones that we did test. Out of all the products out there, we chose home security systems. You know, we thought it'd be interesting because they're, you know, you can buy them anywhere. They're easy to install and they appear to be very safe and a great product. So we thought, oh, well, you know, let's see what happens with that. They're supposed to protect our home, property, and family when we're not there or when we're 
not awake in the house. Some of the boxes just say security system. Others say professional security systems. And uh, we wanted to look at those in a narrow light and test them fully. You know, when you, when you read the box, it's a lot of marketing, but you believe you're safe. And we wanted to make sure that, you know, people actually are safe. And in the testing, it turns out oh, it's, this really isn't the case that there are as solid as you would think. You know, a lot of it is the price point also with these. You know, some are $60, some are a couple hundred dollars. So it was an interesting range for the selection, for the samples that we did test. I also want to talk about responsible disclosure. With these tests, every manufacturer was contacted several, several, several times. Like I mentioned before, I think one was 18 times that I tried to contact them and it didn't work out very well. There was one manufacturer that we did go through the full process with and they're noted in the presentation. The test results did review everything that we found with the testing and it was provided to them in a full report, an arm's length report, so there wasn't any bias with it. So for the next few slides, we'll be going through a few of the manufacturers of the products that are out there in the industry for people to purchase. The ones that we're showing you aren't necessarily the ones that were tested. They're just examples. The first one I, I thought uh, was interesting, and it's funny. They're funny. So I was watching TV one night, and a commercial came on that I had seen far too many times. And you've probably seen this guy also. Here are three of the commercials that I found. Usually I treat this as more of brain candy than anything and don't think about it. As you can see, they are marketing the SimpliSafe security system. It's listed as one of the best of 2020. This is also listed as a fifth best home security system by buyersguide.org. There's a link for that. Now this does cost about $160 uh, when it was last checked on. Prior to the holidays, it was $230. So at least it was on sale for consumers and this was also rated by U.S. News and World Report as a 4.2 out of 5. Here are some other information from their website you know security that works as hard as you do rated 8.5 modern home security without the hassle whole home protection 
makes you feel like this is an exceptional product. Now another manufacturer in this space is Mercury Innovations. They call it the Kangaroo or Roo. Now security.org gave them a six and a half out of 10. So that's really not the best as you can imagine, but, but it's very affordable. For about $80, you can get the full security set. It's easy to install. Just need a screwdriver. And then everyone on their website though, miraculously gave them five out of five. Here are just a few more for you to take a look at. SHS, Safe Home Security. That makes you feel safe, right? It's just there in the name. Blue by ADT. That's another manufacturer. And we've all seen the ring security system. This is a pretty good product, well designed. It's, it's very aesthetic. Now, safety from the inside out. Secure home, secure network. So I know you feel safe with this one in your house. With all the tests we did, there are some commonalities with the successful attacks against the units. The first one is that all the units can be defeated with a simple $8 magnet. You can repurpose this from another piece of equipment that you have around the house or work, or you could even purchase it from Amazon. Yes, even the professional professional security system costing over $200 can be defeated by the cheap $8 magnet. This was noted with one of the units that was tested with an older unit and a newer unit. And what we wanted to do was see if they had changed the mechanism that is a security feature. No, they had not. It was also the same with three other of the manufacturers. Very easily defeated with an $8 magnet. And we'll see that in the next few slides. I know you're wondering, how can you defeat these professional security systems, these systems that cost over $200, with an $8 magnet. Even a caveman can do it. Now, how does this happen? Well, this is totally a design issue. These systems work with the reed system. And you can see that there with a the red arrow, and that we'll see it better in, a, in the next few slides too. You have two pieces of metal that overlay near their edge. This can be a metal rectangle box or a glass tube that they're in. We have pictures of both of those in here. When the units are in operation and the user puts this in operation and turns it on, the sensor is placed on the door or window frame. The other piece, the magnet, is placed on the window or door. So they're close to each other on the door jam or window jam and the window or door. When operating, the magnet pulls the two pieces of metal together in the metal box or the glass tube, completing the circuit. So as you close the door or window, the magnet pulls the two pieces of metal together. When the door or window is closed, it arms the system, and it prepares it to chime whenever the two are separated again. Uh, it can chime locally or at the base station, depending on what unit you have. 
Now it sounds pretty easy, right? So you have this, you have a magnet holding the metal together. When a burglar comes in, he, he pushes open the door, separating the two pieces, and it sets off the alarm. Should be foolproof. Well, actually, this is too easy of a design. Here are two much better pictures of the reed system. You can see with the arrows pointing towards where the separation is when the magnet is not near. You can think through when the magnet is near, like when the door is closed, those two would be held together. So here's the attack method. So how do you defeat it? You keep the two metal reeds together. It's really that simple. To defeat the sensor, you only must introduce magnetism. Sounds easy? Why, yes, yes it is. You can do this from outside the door or inside the house, your choice. For the external attack, you would need a stronger magnet, but that also is easily sourced through Amazon. The stronger the magnet costs, $13. The magnets and the gear you need for this is a stick or a probe if you're doing the internal attack, which is e easily hidden and you can blend in without an issue with these. So if you're doing the external attack, you may need a stronger magnet than these. But again, you can get those pretty easy from Amazon. If you want to do an internal attack and just use you know, a couple of these magnets that are shown, you uh, can just attach them to the end of a stick or a little metal probe, open the door slightly and slowly, and just slide it in. And uh, we did both of these attacks also. Here you can see how far away I can have the magnet from the sensor. It can be spread out even further with the magnet on the sensor. At this point, the sensor's function is completely moot. It's just a piece of plastic with a small board in it with a couple chips. With this, you have complete access to the house or whatever you're trying to get into. Not a problem. All right, so here we have the external attack. Let's say you get to the target and you realize you left your stronger magnet in your other backpack. What do you do? One thing with the sensors and magnets is the manufacturer used ones too strong. This is an issue. You can see how small the housing is from the pictures. For the tests, we could separate these anywhere from two to two and a half inches without the sensor going off and chiming and alerting anybody. The picture on the upper right shows one unit where the separation is one inch prior to the chime and the base unit being notified. This one would be a little more difficult to compromise from the external side, but the other ones would be easy unfortunately. This allows you to pass the magnet into the house and attach to the sensor. You would need to bend the probe the magnets are attached to, but this is not a big deal. You can still pass these through the window, through the door if you have it ajar without an issue. To show another piece of the attack, we set up a test bench. For the test bench, we used a block of wood to simulate the door or window. Yes, this is one and a quarter inches thick. For an actual door, you might want to try a stronger magnet. And again, for a few bucks more, you can buy this from Amazon. Not a big deal again. And you can see how far I was able to 
separate the magnet from the chime. And for the test itself, I could have separated these even further. You can see the magnet on the lower right hand corner of the picture under the module. Here's a bit of a close-up pre-test. You can see the magnet there, the oval, and the sensor, the square. The magnets under the block of wood are there to hold the reeds together on the sensor. Once you do this, the system is not really functional. It's just there for decoration. As you can imagine, each unit and each security system is different. The, so to, to best test this, we also use different types of magnets. And you can see a couple examples here. You know, this read system is very simple and very inexpensive to purchase and manufacture. Given this, a lot of other companies use it and they market it as a benefit, which when you look at it really isn't the case when you think through how it works. You can see here, I marked a couple areas for you to take a look at with that, documenting it. Here's another example. I found this also on Amazon. Amazon sells everything. You can see the top arrow, you know, it marks it as a magnetic read switch. Like it's supposed to stop cat burglars or something. The, uh, the other two arrows, if you look at and you read those, it's almost giving you instructions on how to hack it, which is even more unusual. But wait, there's more. All right, so here's another one, also from Amazon. This one states it's an, it's an effective tool for theft deterrence. You know, I'm not sure what their definition of deterrence is. Um, you know, another system had in their marketing information that their unit uses a magnet, and when it's moved from the sensor, quote, a signal will be sent to convenience lighting based on system settings, end quote. You know, I think some of these companies use the term magnet like others do AI like it's magic and nothing can defeat it when it's just a magnet. And then you can see here a couple spots where I put in the red arrows for you. That's enough of uh, the examples. If you go to Amazon and look this up, you can see there's many, many more out there that you can look at. And you can do this test, you know, by yourself or you know, even show your your uh, uh, children or your co-workers how easy it is to defeat these. Unfortunately, it is cheap and easy to do that. Now, if there's any manufacturer that believe the test results can't be duplicated or don't believe their system is susceptible to this, please contact me. The, glad, the lab will gladly retest a production unit or test a unit that hasn't been done yet, gladly. And uh, we'll publish the results after we go through responsible disclosure. 
And working through these, you know, it became apparent that the manufacturers didn't really see this as a problem. I mean, to test this, you know, it took a block of wood that anybody can get from anywhere around the house or from a neighbor and $8 worth of magnets. I mean, if you have a commercial door, you, you know, you're going to need stronger magnets. But still, this is easily defeated. Now, for the units that we did test, there were no anti-tampering mechanisms in place. You just defeat it, and then you cruise on in and do your thing. There are options available, however. These have not been implemented. What makes this such an issue is that companies are marketing this as a professional security system. You're going to secure your home and a bunch of other buzzwords. In reality, they know this doesn't work. They have embedded into their system these inexpensive parts and mechanisms and hope no one knows how to use the internet to look up how these really work. I know you can you get what you pay for, but you know you would hope that these were a little more secure. You know, with some of these lower price units being twenty dollars, people should not expect a world class security system that will keep out a professional burglar or even a moderately professional burglar. There are also these units costing over $200 that use the same operating technology that are still vulnerable. I know you're thinking, well, these are only used in homes, right? There's no way somebody would use something like this on a commercial alarm. Well, yeah, yeah, they still do. There's a picture of one in uh, in Michigan that I saw that I thought was interesting. Now, with commercial alarms, you're going to pay a lot more than 20 or over $200 generally. You would think the more you pay, the more technology is involved with the equipment, you would think. That's not always the case. You would hope a commercial establishment would not use one of these systems since they aren't really that good. I mean, sorry to say it, but that's how it is. Um, you know, I'm, oh, I'm sorry for the picture being a little grainy, but I mean, you can see what uh, what they're using. I was trying to be covert while taking the picture. So now the base station operates to collect data from the sensors. This could be from the magnet and the sensor you have on the windows or doors to detect smoke or carbon dioxide, water, or any number of things. This is important to the system. If this isn't working, it can't notify police. Someone has broken into your house, there's a flood, or the house is burning down. This would be an issue. Unfortunately, this is also easily defeated with a family size potato chip bag. You can simply place the chip bag over the base station. Now, not every chip bag will do, though. This needs to have a metallic lining, and it must be a little thicker than some of the uh, cheaper bags that are out there. For this test, we used an Ace potato chip bag. You can see... Uh, uh, that's Ryan's hand there in the lower corner. Um, you can also use, in certain instances, a microwave or an oven. You know, it's notable the newer systems may not be vulnerable to this. It just depends on which one is in use. But wait, there's still more with the base station. Let's say you can't have the potato chips. You know, you're watching your carb intake or your cholesterol. You can also jam the signal with a ham radio. Yes, you can purchase this from Amazon, but this is anywhere from 60 to 70 dollars. 
So, just to add this up, to compromise a system over $200, we're up to about $110 without tax for everything. You only need to broadcast on the same operational frequency as a base unit and sensors. This, as we know, is easily found. That's not a problem figuring that out. You would want to know if the base station was not working, right? So let's say you've purchased one or two of the systems which has this issue. Let's say, just for a number, the system was off for 39 hours. This would be a problem you would want to know about. You may be out of town and there's a fire at your house, a flood shorted out the base station, someone broke in, you know, anything could have happened. You'd want to know that the base station's off. Well, at least one of the units tested didn't report it. Now, to attack the house, if the scenario would work without an issue, all I have to do is target your house. I walk up and either defeat the door or window sensor externally or internally with a probe. I walk, not run. I don't run anymore. To the base station and cover it with a Faraday bag or a potato chip bag if I had the munchies on the way over to your house. I now have access to everything in the house until you get home. The base station is not receiving communications as to anything going on in the house. Now with people going back to the office, this could be for four hours or eight. All of this is done for $110 of equipment and a little bit of imagination. I'll note this was the work of the lab in total. I want to thank the other team members who couldn't be here today who assisted with this. Now, earlier I mentioned Ryan. There's also Michael Marchese, both excellent researchers and technicians. Now, I also wanted to note this was a limited scope set of tests. With more time, the test results would have been much worse for the manufacturers. I guarantee it. This, however, does prove our point. Now, I found this a little unique, right? So, one of the manufacturers that was shown in an example in the beginning was Rue or Kangaroo by Mercury. One of my buddies had this on his phone and you know, he wasn't using it anymore, so he deleted it off the phone. Within a couple of days, he received the message in the lower left-hand corner. And this, this was just out of the blue. So they are tracking, it appears they are tracking what you're doing with the app. But wait, there's more. And more and more. So my buddy didn't put the app back on his phone. He kind of blew it off that he received that message from them. Well, a couple days later, he received this. I know it's an automated message, but, but still, it, it seems like they're a bit overly excited about getting the app back on his phone. And as part of the responsible disclosure, I did want to make this blatantly obvious. And so we tested the Nui Cam Indoor IPC 007-1080P. We worked with the company through the test, gave them plenty of time to fix the issues, and let them know this was going to be presented. We began communicating with them on April 4th, 2022. Also, we dug into the hardware of the camera a bit more. Now, the camera uses as part of its functions the micro SD card. We were able to pull the data for it. There's nothing too astonishing with this, but it's 
probably shouldn't be so readily accessible. You can see here from some of the code that it the app is scraping data. I'll let you look through this for a moment and see what looks interesting. As we dug more and more into the code, we found more and more data was scraped by the camera. The app looks at who manufactures the phone. If the phone manufacturer is Denali, I probably mispronounced that, FCM, Xiaomi, Huawei, Tencent, Baidu, or Ali, it's treated differently than other phones. And you can see it noted there in the code. And for something different, you know, we were bored. We decided to look at how many files are associated with Huawei. And there's a sample of them there. There's many more than that. With the app itself, there is a lot of hard-coded data. Now, as you look through this, do you see anything interesting? And just think to yourself, should this data be available? What could an enterprising person do with this? So we looked a little deeper into the APK. You know, once we saw there was a string on the sweater, we started to tug at it. So the APK attempts to adjust their permissions on your phone. Here's a section of the code. The uses permission means the user must grant these permissions. The issue here is during the setup, the notification of what the user is granting may not be very clear or this may appear to be a blanket statement the user is agreeing to in the TNC. This is requesting permissions for accessing the network and Wi-Fi, being able to read write to the external media, which is normal. This also oddly asks for being the Bluetooth admin. It's in line 13, asking the GPS coordinates. That's in 18, 19, and 27. Changing the Wi-Fi state. That's in 34 and 35. Disabling the keyboard, 68. Accessing the download manager, 71. Downloading without notifying the user, 72, and others. This seems like a bit much just for a camera. But wait, there's still more. Here the app is looking for your SSID and password. You know, I, I read through the code. I enjoy the, the attempts to hide functionality within the code. So if you're going through it and you do a search for Wi-Fi because you want to see everything the code's doing with Wi-Fi, you know, you're going to pick it up. But what they did, as you can see, is they changed the spelling of that just a bit. It's nice to see uh, that they have the creative stretch to uh, be creative with their naming conventions. We also looked at the QR code because that was part of the setup. So here's a QR code that you use with the device. Uh, the QR code passes the BSSID and password in the clear. On the right is the decrypted QR code. L is location. Wi-Fi oh, is your Wi-Fi. Z is the signal strength. R is the nation. T is a Wi-Fi security. P is the password. And S is the network name. And yes, we have Shell. We are able to get Shell on this without much effort at all. And here you see 
what we were able to monitor and capture when we were setting up the camera. Now, the top portion, yeah, you really can't read anything into that. So, naturally, we converted it from hex to ASCII. And you can see a lot more of what is going on with this. Now, while this isn't overly critical, we really shouldn't have been able to see all this. I'd like to thank you for attending. You know, in this day and age, time is becoming much more of a commodity. And we really appreciate you spending your time here with us to go over the presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the team. My email's there below, and you can also reach me at charlesparkerii at protonmail.com. But thank you again. We appreciate it. If you have any questions about anything that we've covered here, please reach out. I will respond. And, um, you know, I have, I think, a couple extra samples of the manufacturers. If you, know, you want one of those to test on and try the techniques with, just reach out to me and uh, we'll see what we can do. Thank you again and have a great day.